So I know a lot of you watching may have tried Nostr out at some point in the past, maybe found that some of the apps or clients that one uses to interface with the Nostr protocol, maybe they were cumbersome, hard to use, you were a little early, and maybe you haven't really looked into it in some time. And so for those of you and others who might be asking a similar question, I wanna dig in today to Nostr. Is it dead? What has been happening? Today we're gonna to unpack everything and discuss. Let's jump in. This video is made possible by Bitcoin Trading Cards and I am pumped to have them as the first sponsor on my channel. I met Aladdin and the team back at Pacific Bitcoin 2022, and I'm not gonna lie, at the time I thought, okay, cool, a quirky little Bitcoin project, but little could I have imagined at the time how this project would capture imaginations. I've personally used these to orange pill people that I care about in my life. The art is stunning and features Bitcoin artists all around the world. You get high quality Bitcoin education on topics like economics and freedom as part of that which makes this, as you can imagine, a really special project for me. And I'm not gonna lie, it makes you want to collect these. The community behind this is also truly insane. And I think they have a real shot at bringing Bitcoin to the mainstream. So if you're curious to check them out, head over to btc-tc.com where you can find the different series they've launched. And hey, if you do end up snagging some cards, you'll also get some Bitcoin rewards back on your purchase, powered by Jolts. Here's to ripping packs and stacking sats. So if you're brand new to Nostr, I have done an overview video. This was probably a little over a year ago where I go into how the Nostr protocol itself works. And then I went through a tutorial of one of the popular clients or apps uh, by which one accesses Nostr called Damas. And so if you want to check that video out, go and take a look because that will go into how Nostr works in a little more detail. But in essence, it is this censorship resistant protocol for publishing information on the web, right? The big problem with centralized social media platforms and other things is you are trusting that singular behemoth entity. And they can, with a single keystroke, ban you from using that platform, maybe over speech that they don't agree with. And we saw a lot of that over the last several years. And so Nostra has a very different architecture. It's very simple and resilient. You have different relays, which are essentially the servers that are passing data back and forth to clients, which are the interface or tool or app that you are using to interact with the protocol uh, to make posts, etc. And so as it happened, a lot of people's first experience of Nostr was in the context of social media, right? As a decentralized censorship resistant social media concept. And so there was quite a bit of excitement when this all came out. It was very topical at the time, continues to be topical. And it appeared that Nostra would be able to succeed in a way that other prior iterations of this, like Mastodon and others, have sort of failed to accomplish. But as we can see, we can look here on stats.nostra.ban, we can see daily active users. And this, as you can see, is largely stagnating maybe even a little bit down. This is over the last six months. Uh, that is sort of the largest time frame I can get on this. You can look at weekly active users. And so again, some of you are probably sort of nodding your head thinking, well, yeah, maybe I tried it out. And again, it was tough to use and clunky. And you know what, like Twitter or X, whatever is just a better experience. And so like, I'm kind of kind of just stay there. And so it begs this question, like, is that it? Was that a flash in the pan? And will Nostr sort of fade into history similar to some of the other efforts that we've seen? And my view is not so fast because there's a lot more happening. Not only are these early clients that people used continuing to really improve, and I'll go through a short sort of on the fly tutorial of one called Primal a little bit later in this video, but we're also seeing just totally net new categories of potential use cases for Nostr. So let's examine a couple of them. One of those is identity, right? User owned identity is something that has been talked about for a very long time. Indeed, we just saw a MicroStrategy come out with its orange product, 
which are decentralized IDs that are being inscribed onto Bitcoin. There's all the Web5 stuff that TBD is doing. So there's been, again, different flavors of all of this. But what Max Webster here is arguing is that Noster is the identity for the internet. He argues it's ridiculously simple, and it is. Users own their identity, so it's just a cryptographic key pair. You get a public and private key that you can map to more human readable identifiers. But at the end of the day, like that's, that's it, you own that. And so the vision he's painting here is, again, imagine if you could port your identity and social graph, your connections, your followers, your experiences, your preferences from app to app to app to app, instead of having to come in, log in, Say, you know, give all your information to one app, then turn around and do it again. That would no doubt make the internet a lot more usable. You have this sort of platform owned paradigm currently where you have the big behemoths that are, you know, closed silos where your identity resides. And then you have your separate identity here and here and here. And so this would allow you to have a singular identity that you can port back and forth. And so let's actually look at a quick example of what I mean by that. And so to demonstrate exactly what I mean by that, let's take a look at a simple example of porting my identity and social graph from one Nostra client to another. And so I'm coming into Damas here on my phone, right? Here's my, you know, feed. Here's my profile. I've got, you know, the people I'm following, the people that are following me, the relays I'm connected to, uh, all that good stuff. And so I'm going to come over and come to my settings and I'm going to go to my keys and I'm going to copy my NSEC or my private key, right? And now I have that copied. I'm going to come over to Primal. So Primal is another Oster client. Uh, you can download it on desktop or mobile. So I'll open Primal. And as we can see, there's a couple options, right? I can create an account but I can also sign in. And as we can see, Primal sees that I have something on my uh, clipboard. I will allow the paste and there I am, right? There's my profile and I'm able to seamlessly sign in to this completely different application. And there I have my same feed. I have my profile. I have the people that I'm following. All of that has been instantly ported over and so from a usability standpoint, that's really nice. By the way, I wanted to specifically do this example because as it turns out, Primal has been building like crazy. And so for those of you that are asking, oh, you know, maybe what's a good way to get started? What's a good uh, client to use? Or maybe you've given it a try in the past and you want to, you know, check out what has changed. Primal has been building like crazy. So there's more zapping functionality that has been embedded, right? I can zap, it looks like I need to uh, activate my wallet. Now, as you can see, if I actually come back to my profile and go to settings and I go to the wallet, you'll see that I have my uh, LN address, ragermajor at getalbi.com. And so people can zap me. That's where sats would go if they zap uh, me or my posts. However, if I want to zap others, it does look like I need to activate and set this up. So if I come to the lightning symbol here, you can see activate wallet now. And if I click that, you'll see that there is some information that I need to put in, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. So let me put that in and see what happens. Okay, so that is interesting. I kind of see what's happening here now. Um, as we can see, we've activated the wallet. It seems like all they need is an email so that they can send you a verification code presumably to ensure that you're a real person. So I, I think you could probably put in whatever fake uh, information, right? I don't think you need to put your real name or anything like that. You could probably use a throwaway email. Um, and now I have this handy new uh, lightning address with, uh, with Primal. So that's sort of interesting. So interestingly, you can buy some sats directly from the uh, app here. You can also receive some sats. Looks like you even have a built-in um, Bitcoin address for on-chain. So I didn't even realize this. I'm sort of doing this as a little mini uh, kind of real-time run-through of, of Primal just because I had heard some good things about it recently. So this is pretty cool. Um, you know, I could copy this Lightning address, 
and come over to, for example, Blue Wallet, and maybe I can send some value and I can paste this in. and send some sats, maybe we do, you know, a thousand sats. And there we go. And so I've got, uh, I've got some sats. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, in, in a nutshell, you have this sort of fully functioning wallet built directly into Primal, which is pretty slick. Uh, you can scan QR codes to send payments out. And now if I come back, you know, I can uh, zap different things, right? I just added a, a, a zap. So that's all pretty cool. I must say Primal has done a really nice job. Uh, you can also paste things. So nice about Primal is you can directly upload images. You see the little icon there in the middle on the left. That is super nice. Uh, that was one of the big pain points, right? You had to kind of go to a specific uh, URL, upload a image, then get the URL of that uploaded image and paste it into a Noster note. Uh, so Primal has made that a lot easier too. So anyway, wanted to do that little mini walkthrough of Primal, but let's get back to the main video. So pretty cool stuff, not just for the user who again can bring their social graph and other information along with them in a way that they control, but also pretty good for app developers who always face this cold start problem, right? Instead of having to kind of churn out and build this whole entire user base themselves, they can potentially inherit that user base from this existing group of users that are elsewhere on Nostr. But I think Nostr is even broader than that, right? Okay, we've talked about, you know, censorship resistant social media, we've talked about identity, but what about just a generalized, neutral, censorship resistant communication protocol for the internet? I think that's probably arriving at the appropriate broadness of what Nostr really is. And for an excellent example of that, we need to look no further than Nostr Wallet Connect. Okay, so Nostr Wallet Connect is pretty darn cool. Uh, Moritz Kaminsky at Albi did a great talk at the Tuscany Lightning Summit in Italy back in April. I will link that in the description down below if you wanna take a look at. But as we can see, Nostr Wallet Connect is an open protocol to connect Lightning wallets to different apps, right? So think of any app you use, whether it's social media, whether it's Discord, whether it's you know an e-commerce app, a chat app, whatever. How do you connect and interoperate those apps with Lightning wallets. That is the problem that Nostra Wallet Connect is looking to solve. And how do you do that in a way in which the Nostra Wallet Connect itself is not custodying uh, anything? And, and so this is how it works. Basically an app is going to create a connection with the wallet uh, so there's things called connection strings by which you can establish a connection. And then once that connection is established, the app is able to request an invoice. And that information, very cool, is actually being conveyed over a Nostr relay. So that is part of what makes this a highly resilient system. And then the wallet is able to pay that invoice. And in that video, he demonstrates a couple examples, including even doing a lightning payment in Discord, right? An app that has absolutely no native lightning support whatsoever. So that's pretty cool if you start to think about the possibilities there and how Noster is being used as this censorship resistant communication protocol to interface between these two different things. There's other cool stuff. I did a video about five months ago on Nostr Marketplace for unstoppable commerce, right? Think about selling things on Shopify and Shopify for whatever reason might uh, kill your account and there your business goes, right? Privacy has been a huge topic recently. I just did a video on all the Tornado Cash, Samurai Wallet stuff. Wasabi shutting down their CoinJoin server. 
Agora Desk is shutting its doors. I mean, it is crazy. It's like an announcement every single day, just blow after blow after blow to privacy. And yet you also have things like Mostro, which is a really interesting concept that uses Nostr to enable non-KYC peer-to-peer uh, exchange of lightning sets. Side note, Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already because I will probably do a tutorial video on that in the very near future, which as I discussed in my last video is incredibly timely. In the process of doing the editing, I also found nosterapps.com, which is just a terrific library for tons and tons of things out there that you may wanna check out. And that only scratches the surface of what is going on. If you're a builder, by the way, now is a great time to be involved in Nostr. Uh, Jack Dorsey just donated $21 million to OpenSats, which is an open source uh, dev funding platform. Everything passes through. OpenSats is, is just awesome. And as you can see, 5 million of that is going to the Nostr Fund. And if you go to OpenSats on Twitter and you just scroll some examples, there is example after example after example of Nostr developers getting funding for really cool things. Here's uh, No Strudel, a fast web-based Nostr client. There's Stuart Bowman maintaining and developing Satellite Earth, a web-based Nostr client geared towards self-sovereign communities. Pablo, who's working on all sorts of cool stuff as it relates to Nostr. And the list goes on. So check that out if you are a builder and developer interested in playing with some really cool stuff. And so what are the future prospects of Nasser? I think understandably a lot of people were disillusioned after the very early stages. You've seen usage sort of stagnate a bit after this initial use case. But from my vantage point, there is just a ton of activity happening, ton of developers and builders that are building on this protocol. And I think it is only a matter of time before we see the next wave of adoption. And it may take a while, right? So what are the sort of arguments in favor of Nostra continuing to grow? There is this kind of flywheel effect that's possible where each additional app that gets created has the potential to benefit from this uniform protocol that it is built on. It's not siloed. You don't have that same cold start problem that every single app in the traditional world faces. And that could be very potent indeed. Again, that probably takes time to build up. And then arguments against Nostra is, well, it's still sort of hard to use. Discoverability and search functionality in particular has a long way to go, right? The ability to just like find people, find organizations that you care about on Nostra is still uh, very tough to do. It has historically been very difficult to even just do simple things like post media or images or videos uh, on Nostr, although as we saw in Primal, they have made that a whole lot easier. I'm curious to hear, what are your thoughts? What do you think of Nostr? Did you use it in the early days? Do you continue to use it? Have you been consistent with it? What do you like? What do you not like about it? What are you excited about, if anything, from what we've discussed today? Are there other things that you are excited about with Nostr, let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you found this valuable and insightful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like, use the share feature underneath this video that really does help get this to a broader audience. And if you were so enamored with this content, you wanna to donate to a pleb, which really does help me continue to make these videos, you can zip some sats over to me via Lightning, to my Lightning address, me at www.enmajor.xyz, or ragermajor at getalbi.com. And for those of you that wanna get in touch with me, I'm now working with quite a few clients one-on-one -on, -one on all sorts of Bitcoin-related topics, taking self-custody, running your own node, accepting Bitcoin payments for your business, whatever it is, some of the privacy-related topics, whatever it is, you can reach out to me on Vita. That is vita.io slash Ian Major. If you want some additional handholding, one-on-one -on -one consulting, mentorship, etc., that is the best place to reach me. But we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As a reminder, every sack counts. And until next time, my friends, I'll see you then.